Alright, this is the start of P3, which is about radicals and rational exponents. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to evaluate square roots. Use the product rule to simplify square roots. Use the quotient rule to simplify square roots. Add and subtract square roots. Rationalize denominators. Evaluate and perform operations with higher roots and understand the use of rational exponents. Now what we're actually going to do is we're going to sprinkle this in. Evaluate and perform operations with higher roots. We're going to sprinkle this in all through the lecture. So instead of going through it once with square roots and then going through it again with uh, higher uh, roots, we're just going to sprinkle it in. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to learn how to communicate. So as you can see, we have this. Uh, you guys are w well versed in this. This is a square root of 4. But just like we did with exponents, we're going to learn the parts. And uh, exponents are a little bit easier, probably, than radicals. Now, if I were to give you something like this and say x, okay, what you should be able to tell me is a couple things about that x. You would tell me the coefficient of x is 1, even though there's no number written right there. The assumption is it's 1, and that the exponent of x is also 1. So those are just kind of understood things uh, when you're dealing with uh, a term like that. Well, these, this also has an assumed thing. And the assumption is, is that uh, the root the root is right here. It has a special name. We'll talk about it here in a second. Uh, the root, if there is no root written, then the root is assumed to be 2. Okay. If there is another number written right there, then make sure that you know that that is a different root. Uh, and the root, the name we use uh, when we're dealing with radicals, is called our index. So we're, we'll refer to that number as your index. So what you need to know is that if you don't have a number written on your radical, uh, then that number is assumed to be 2, just like the assumption of a 1 coefficient, 1 exponent. You can't take the, the first root of anything. So 2 is the smallest index we could possibly have. Next, we're going to talk about this. The number you're taking the, the root of is called your radicand. And the last thing we need to talk about is just our symbol. This is called our radical sign. Radi Okay, so just some basics. Uh, again, the root, what we're taking, is going to be called our index. The number underneath the radical sign is called our radicand. So we'll look at some more basics. Uh, so what we're going to do is the square root of 4. Well, you guys know the square root of 4. Uh, the square root of 4 is 2. Now, as you can see, this is an algebraic expression. And like we talked about on the very first lecture, is there's a difference between an expression and equation. Okay, it is completely accurate for you to put 2 there. Okay, but when you get into an equation like this, where you have x squared is equal to 4, and you would solve for x, and the inverse of squaring something is to take the square root, then you would get x is equal to, if you put 2, you would only be half right. Okay, that's one of the differences. The, when you solve for something like this, you'd actually get plus or minus 2. So you need to know that when you get into equations and you're solving for x and you're taking the square root to do that, you're always going to put plus or minus in front of your answer. This value of 2 is what we like to call the principal root. It's the positive root for that answer. So make sure that you're aware of that. Um, this is completely correct, but then when we get into equations, you need to change from an expression to an equation. Lastly, uh, just some things you need to know. Uh, what we're going to talk about is we're going to have different even and uh, or different indexes. We could have even indexes, or we could have odd indexes. So even indexes would be like 2, 4, 6. Odd indexes would be 3, 5, 7. Okay. And uh, what we're looking for, radicand. Our radicand can be positive or negative. That's the number under the radical. So if you have an even index and a positive radicand, such as what we talked about as the square root of 4, then as you can see, we get one positive solution. A little earlier, we just showed you that. So we would get a nice little 2. Now, if we have an even index and negative solution, so square root of negative 4, right now, we're just going to say that's no real solution. You guys are right. You may know that answer. It's uh, basically uh, 2i is what we're looking for. But right now, an i is an imaginary solution so we won't get into that until we get into that section a little bit later on talking about complex numbers so right now for us we're just going to say that's no real solution however we could have an odd uh, index and a positive radicand such as this the cube root of 8 
the cube root of 8. The cube root of 8, your index basically means, you know, when you're taking the root of something, you're looking for uh, what can you multiply by itself, the number of times represented by your index, to get your radicand. So in other words, what can I multiply by itself three times to give us 8? And that answer is 2. So as you can see, you get one positive solution. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Down here, odd index, negative radicand. So it would be the cube root of negative 8. Now if this were an even index and a negative radicand, it would be no solution. But we actually have an answer. Whoops, I meant to put a 2. Uh, we actually have an answer for this one because negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 times negative 2 is 8. So unlike even solutions where we have a chance for having an imaginary answer, you can actually take the odd root of a positive or negative number. Last thing we need to talk about is this, just simplifying a couple little ones here, and then we'll move on to uh, the next up. Square root of 25, you guys will know, is going to be 5. Now, what you need to know is that our radicals are just like a grouping symbol. So uh, we need to do that first. So it's first there, so the square root of 121 is 11, and then 11 times the coefficient. This is actually the coefficient. Uh, I may have should have written that on there. Yeah, we also have a coefficient right here. Sorry. So that's our coefficient. Make sure that you're aware of that, just like when we add a nice little, uh, yeah, whatever we were doing last, exponents. The cube root of 125, uh, it's actually 5. So 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. And then last one, uh, our coefficient here is 2, so we'll say 2. The cube root of 1, what can you multiply by itself 3 times to give you 1? That would be 1, so when you multiply those together, you get 2. Uh, the last example is just make sure that you are expressing what you're trying to express correctly. You know, if you want to tell me it's x times the cube root of 2, then uh, make sure that you're doing it correctly. Because right now, I can tell on this one that that's probably written correctly. But here, this can be kind of confusing to me. I don't know if you're telling me that that is x cubed times the square root of 2, or if that's x times the cube root of 2. So make sure that you're writing it so that it's obvious what you are trying to express. A lot of you guys I've seen have done something like this, where this isn't too bad, but then you get to something like this where you're not really writing your index as a kind of a superscript, and then I don't know if that's 73 times the square root of x, or 7 to the uh, cube root of x power. 